This is Nighthawk calling Radio Multiverse. Come in, Radio Multiverse. We need immediate extraction. This is an emergency. Please, immediate extraction. What, what was that? On September 1st, 1939, Germany invaded Poland under the false pretext that Poland had secretly sabotaged German targets. As a result, two days later, France and Great Britain declared war on Germany. The Second World War had officially begun. But in truth, Europe had already become the battlefield of a much more destructive conflict. And although the common man would never find out about its existence, this conflict would decide not only the fate of the citizens of Europe, but of the entire human race. They called it the Secret War. Greetings and welcome, dear listeners, to a very special episode of Radio Multiverse RPG. I am, of course, your humble host, Lord Ramsey. And today, we shall be playing a quaint little game called Achtung Cthulhu! Doesn't that sound exciting? Now, let's meet today's victor- uh, 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 I, mean, I mean player, shall we? First up, we have a man from the land of cheese lovers. Dower, how are you today, old chum? Uh, capital, old chap. Uh, I'm glad to be here, as usual. And I must say, this is a, this is a wonderful, uh, this is a wonderful place that you've chosen for us. Well, it's my pleasure, Dower. My, 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 it is of course my job as the keeper to make certain everything's tidy and in order. Ah yes, sir. everything seems to be in ship shape order. I'm very much pleased with that. Thank you, my, my Lord Ramses. Thank you. Nope. No trouble at all. In any case, please tell us the name and profession of your the character you shall be playing today, Dower. Ah yes, I shall be playing Captain Jack Wolf Russell, a military man, a um, professional military man, as it were, with a few um, character flaws, which I shall hope shall be the most endearing. He has seen action in the uh, in the in the latest uh, kerfuffle or in, involving the guy uh, the Palestine the Palestinians. So Dow? yes, hmm. I'm sorry I have to cut you off, Dar, there, but apparently you weren't listening. I told you name and profession. We shall be getting uh, in your into your character's background very shortly. Thank you very much. Oh, my apologies. I do tend to ramble. Yes, you do. Next, it's my favorite friend from frigid Finland, Nico. How's everything going? Rather well, thank you. I see you've uh, got some sort of medical condition because you seem to have caught some sort of accent. I have. I I uh, <clears throat> I was bitten by the uh, check fly and and I I'm see. trying to weather the effects. I hope it's not contagious. I should I should hope it is, it is not. All right, but uh, hang in there, Nico. I'm so certain you'll you'll be right as rain soon enough. Now, Thank what's you. The, uh, would you care to tell us the name and profession of your character? My character is one is called one Doctor Yagub Blazjak. He is a. Uh, a combat medic, the best of his kind. I see, I see, very good. So you'll be saving lives today. That, among other things, surely, yes. <laughs> ah, splendid, splendid. And our next player is from the country of eternal political disarray and waffles. Dries, how mm, are you? Waffles. I'm good, thank you. Very good. And um, tell us a little bit about your character. A little bit. Well, my character is named Dr. Hendrik Janssen and he yes. is a historian. I see. Very interesting. Very interesting. 
And last, we have a player from the land of hamburgers and giant statues of ladies with pointy crowns. It's Richard. <laughs> hello, Richard. How are you? Uh, hello, people. I am good. And apparently I'm the only one without an accent. What I don't are you talking about? I know nothing of an accent. Yes, I know everybody else is trying to do a horrible accent, but this is just how I uh, always, always sound. Right? Oh, of course, of course, yes. When you want to be creepy and scary. <laughs> he doesn't have to <laughs> try. Of course, of course. No, no, and don't be so rude to our host, please. please Keeper! I do insist you call me Keeper today, Dao. Ah, I shall endeavor to do so. Keeper. Now, tell us about your character, Richard. <clears throat> My character is Secret Agent Man Sam Fisher of the Secret Service of America. I see. Uh, very secretive-sounding person. Oh, he's very secretive. He's so secretive, he'll sneak up right behind you and garrote you before you even know he's there. Nasty. Oh, yes. Well, thank you, everyone, for uh, attending today. Now then, without further ado, it's time for us to start today's adventure, which is entitled The Three Kings. And here I'd like to point out that we are using a published module from the nice people at Modifius Entertainment, and we are using the Savage Worlds version of the game. Anyway, the year is 1939, several months before the beginning of the Second World War. We begin our story on June the 27th, in a quaint little tea house in the centre of London, where a certain gentleman of Czechian origin has agreed to meet an old acquaintance of his, Karel Palisek. And I, uh, and I apologize in advance if I'm pronouncing anything wrong. Czech is not my forte. Hey? In any case, uh, Nico. It's a nice sunny day, and you're sitting near a window, waiting for your uh, friend to arrive. And at this point, would you care to describe what your character looks like? Uh, he looks like a very typical Czechian man. He is of uh, black hair, short, cut, very tidy. Yes. And, um... Yeah, mm -hmm. Actually, uh... I've, I've, uh, hang on. What's the word? Don't overdo it, Nico. Just take a deep breath and calmly explain it. He has a uh, he has a stub, unshaven beard, a freshly shaven beard with a little stub. Stubble. Uh, that's that's the thing. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Ah. Uh, now then, um, you are uh, sitting in a, uh, t like I said, you're sitting in a uh, tea house near the window. Um, what are you, are? yes, your friend is a, a little, a few minutes late. What are you doing at this particular moment? A glancing to his watch, rather, rather uh, nervously. For mm -hmm. he, is, he doesn't approve, uh, doesn't like his friends being late. And uh, enjoying a nice cup of tea. Yes, I was about to ask if you're uh, sitting there. Probably a waitress would have come up to you by now, but I see you got that all covered. Very good. So yes, you're sitting there uh, for a while, and a few minutes later, Karl arrives. He is a man in his early forties who, who's. Uh, who has who has some wrinkles under his eyes, no doubt caused by many years of worry. And uh, he comes up to you, and, and he says, uh, I, "I apologize, my friend, uh, for being a little bit uh, late. Uh, there was a uh, something suddenly came up that uh, required my attention." And he sits down. And by the way, he is addressing you in English. Just wanted to point that out. Ah, well, in that case, he smiles, speaking very roughly. He says, it is okay, my friend. I can understand you are a man of many... Uh, I understand you are a busy man. 
you need not to apologize. You need uh, not to apologize. He, and he says, uh, th Thank you, my friend. Uh, so, uh, how have things been? It has uh, been a while since I uh, last saw you. Uh, how are you adjusting here uh, to life in England? It is rather difficult. Different what I... Uh, sorry, I mean difficult. Dif different. From what it has been in... Um, in, uh, in mo motherland, yes. No, 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 not motherland. In, in home, back home, yes. Is yes, that I mean. is... That is to be to be understood. We we all have a, we all have our difficult times, and there are times I I must admit I also I also miss miss my home uh, back in uh, Czechoslovakia. But these are the times we live in, my friend, and we must make our adjustments. And uh, I agree, my. Meanwhile, while while he's uh, speaking with you, he orders some uh, he orders some uh, food and drink from a uh, pass passing waitress. Okay. And yes, he in uh, he engages in some uh, idle chit chat with you, asking how you've been doing and what you've been what you've been keeping busy with and things like that. But after uh, several minutes of uh, talking, he um, suddenly switches to uh, check and he, and he uh, gets a little closer to you and he, uh, uh, he speaks in a hush in a hushed tone. And he and he says, uh, "My friend, the the colonel has need of your services." And he hands you a letter. All right takes the letter, inclines his head, and says, the colonel, uh, of course, whatever I can for, for And then he says, just, uh, oh yes, and to clarify, whenever I'm, I'm playing somebody who's talking in their native tongue, I shall refrain from using an accent. <laughs> just to clarify. Likewise. And he says, just just act normal my friend and and take this letter with you home and don't open it before you get home understood very clearly Th very these are dangerous clearly. times these are dangerous times we live in we must remain vigilant at all times now then he the uh, yes sorry, sorry. no 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 go, go ahead, ahead. Uh, oh, all right. The letter and folds it away. In any case, um, yes, you uh, both continue your meals, and after finishing his meal, Carol uh, switches back to English, and uh, and he wipes his mouth, and he and, he's, and he say, and he looks at his watch, and he say, and he says, uh, "Oh dear, is it uh, that late already?" Uh, I, uh, I am very, I'm very sorry, Jakub. I, I must go. There's, uh, there are matters I must uh, attend to. Uh, Jakub simply smiles, nods. You need not apologize. Uh, I understand completely, my friend. You tend now to... Then, uh, you... Hmm? No, no, continue. You tend to your duties as, as, you, as you would normally. Don't let me hold you back. Thank you, thank you. And he gets up. He gets up and uh, he tidies himself up. And and, and he and he says, uh, "Now then, uh, Jakob, I uh, wish you a, a good day, and I hope to see you again uh, very soon." Likewise, he and he not. And he nods at you and departs. All right. Uh, Jakob himself remains a few minutes, not to arouse suspicion. Uh, pretending to, like, I hope, I think there are newspapers there or something like that. Pretending yes, yes, of course. And if there aren't, you could always request one. And one shall be delivered. Alright, well, even if, if let he, is ask, he asks for a newspaper and begins to read it, and once he's read it, once he's read it he simply lowers it down, holds it neatly on the table, and vacay, leaves the tea house. All right, very good. And what's your next uh, order of business? Uh, 
um, head home. I should have probably clarified that. Yes. All right. So he heads home and then pulls out the letter, inspects it with curiosity. Yes, it's an unmarked. It's an unmarked envelope. There's nothing written on it on the outside. Intriguing. Oh, Alright, so uh, then he, of course, checks he isn't being spied upon. Well, and apparently you're, um... There doesn't seem to be anybody in the vicinity. Alright. Then, uh, in that case, he opens the letter. Very well. And you immediately uh, recognize uh, the handwriting of your uh, commander, uh, Frantisek Moravec, which is, of course, the colonel your uh, friend was referring to. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Moravec asks you to come to the Metropole Hot Hotel on the corner of North Northumberland Place and Whitehall in central London on the 17th of July at 9 o'clock in the morning. He has need of your services for a mission of utmost importance. And he also says, I cannot tell you more at this time because there is always the chance that this letter could fall into the wrong hands. But I will tell you that this mission involves the fatherland. And the only uh, and the only thing the doctor needs to do is um, to show this letter to the person at the reception desk of the hotel, and the rest will be taken care of. Okay, well, he raises his eyebrow, reading through the letter, uh, nodding in agreement, and uh, carefully folding the letter back in back into its not oh. not back to the envelope, but back into more compact size and puts it in the pocket of his his coat. And I forgot to mention that you verified its autis its autisticity because uh, you noticed the um the particular uh, signature of your uh, commander uh, at the bottom. Right. So it is the real deal. Excellent. Yes, it is. At least that's what you assume. Hmm, of course. <laughs> In any case, right. now that the good doctor has uh, received his letter, we will go to our next protagonist. Next, we head to... Uh, say, Dao, you, we, we forgot to discuss this. Where exactly would your uh, good captain live? Where Where's this relevance? Um... I should say that he has um, that he has a what say I say what would be appropriate that he has a house in London. Yeah, very it's, well, we're we're staying we're staying close to the headquarters. Very well. It's London. It is where all the life is. That's true. That's true. And the bombs. Let's not forget the bombs. Oh wait. Not a lot of bombs around right now, but one never knows. Indeed. However, um, I've, I've mix, I mixed up my times. So my apologies for that. Yes, London, a small little, a small little house. Yes. So next we head to uh, the residence of Captain Jack Russell in London, who's currently enjoying a nice cup of tea while he's reading the morning newspaper. But unfortunately, Indeed. his peace and quiet is soon interrupted by the ringing of the doorbell. Now then, Dawa, would you care to describe the captain and the house he lives in? Um, let's see. Yes, um, the the how um, the captain has a house that is full of clutter, things that um, f trophies, mementos, keepsakes, dozens, uh, dozens upon dozens, making sure that no inch of the house is uncovered. Um, he has also uh, he has also quite got quite, quite a nice collection of suits ready for well, you know of the man's habits, do you not? Yes, uh, but I'm see. afraid the uh, listeners uh, at home do not. <laughs> I am I am quickly charmed by the uh, I'm quickly charmed by the beauty of a woman's face. 
So yes, ah, one must one must make sure that uh, one's uh, apparel is spotless. So yes, yeah, oh. I take great care. I take great care in my grooming and my clothing, and I often and I and my uh, clothing reflects that. It's all cut for my lean, wiry figure. Um, um, all right. Yes. Let's see. Ah, yes. Little ink. I also like. Um, I also prefer to have uh, sca scarves of many types. Um, just scarves. Uh, to add a little color to my otherwise understated uh, uh, appearance. All right. Very well. Now then, there's the ringing of the doorbell. What shall you do about that? Um, f put down my newspaper and head to the front door and see who it is. Do you open immediately or will you first check... Well, considering I have just returned from a war zone, I will check first. Yes, I, I have been in, I have been in active service until I got shot. And how will you uh, check the identity of your visitor? Mm, let's see. Well, there's a side window, so I will just. Um, uh, I just there's a side window, so I just glance through there and see if it is somebody I recognize. Very well. Um, you see a, a man carrying a, a small briefcase, and he's wearing a long black trench coat and an equally black broad-rimmed hat. He currently seems to be admiring the surroundings, like your house and the front garden. Huh. I shall have to I shall have to compliment Miss uh, Abercrombie, who does the gardening. Of course. Okay. I open up the door and say, greetings. Yes, uh, it takes a moment for the man to notice you. You uh, currently see his backside as, as he's uh, still admiring the surroundings. But uh, uh, soon thereafter, he uh, no notice, notices your appearance and uh, quickly mm -hmm. turns around. Uh, he in Hold on. Yes, and as he turns around, it is revealed that he's a rather skinny man who looks like he's in his uh, late 30s to early 40s. And, uh, mm -hmm. and he says the following. <coughs> oh, I'm, uh, I'm dreadfully sorry, sir. I was uh, admiring your uh, front garden. Why, thank you. I shall certainly give, give your uh, real... Give your compliments to the person that, uh, that uh, attends to it. Yes, yes. You must, you must forgive me, but I have very little time to enjoy the more mundane things of life, you see. So, visiting ah. this garden is a very refreshing pace, uh, change of pace for me. Ah, I am heartily glad that, I've, that this has brought you a little bit of color to your life. Oh, uh, how rude of me, I forgot to introduce myself. And he uh, takes off his hat, revealing that uh, his hair has gone prematurely grey. It is like completely grey. And uh, he, ex he extends his hand. And, and he says, Francis T. Branston, military intelligence. Uh, greetings, Mr. Branston. I am Captain Jack uh, Russell. Yes, yes, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, may I come in, please? Well, of course, Mr. Branson. And I'll open up the door and Thank uh, you. let him inside. Um, I was just reading newspaper. Do not mind the clutter, please. Yes, he first he first starts looking around a little bit, and then and then he looks back to you, and uh, he, he says, "Yes, uh, uh, Captain, I have uh, heard of your uh, exploits during the Arab revol revolt." In uh, Palestine, I uh, must say, uh, some uh, commendable actions you did back there. You sh showed quite some heroics. Oh, hogwash. Any, any of my good swords would have done exactly the same. Oh, you're being needlessly uh, modest, sir. Needlessly modest. Because you see, I have uh, you come highly recommended by General Haining, that, and that is why I am here. Ah, I see. Well, please, have a seat. Can I offer you some tea? Uh, 
Ah, f- no, no, I don't want to be of any bother. I, I'm going to... I'll be it very sh- short. I'll be very short. It isn't a bother, but as you wish. In any case, um, how have you been doing recently? Because I read in the report that you got shot. Have you uh, recuperated? Yes, I have actually. Um, there's, there's still a little bit of stiffness when it rains, so it would be rather pleasant to go out and um, go back to the old Palestine. It rarely mm. rains there. Oh, uh, I'm afraid you won't be going back there for quite some time, Captain. Uh, excuse me? Yes, you see, we have a... Because you were highly recommended by General Haining, we have another mm-hmm. uh, mission lined up for you. As a matter of fact, military intelligence has need of your services. Because we have need ah. of a level-headed military officer to lead a mission of utmost importance on enemy soil. And he, ah, he, uh, he reaches for his briefcase and he starts looking for something. Well, I cannot dis. I hope to not disappoint the general. Uh, I cannot. Uh, I cannot disappoint um, someone who has put his trust in me. Uh, how can I be of service? Here you go, Captain. This letter will explain everything, and he hands you a letter. I see. Well, I'll just look around for a letter mm-hmm. opener, and I decide to actually have an. Uh, uh, draw a, a dagger from one of the walls. It's an Indian Chris, and just open the letter with that. It's useful having clutter around. Yes, and quite similar to our good doctor, you also get an invitation from a certain Frantisek Moravec, who invites you to come to the Metropole Hotel in London. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's at also at the 17th of July at 9 o'clock in the morning. I see. Very well, um, yes, well, thank but of you course, for coming. Of course, it strikes you, the name strikes you as a little bit odd, and you've never heard this name before. Hmm. It is clearly not the name of a British gentleman, that is certain. Indeed. However... During the war, I have I have met a few people who shared on my side who did not share our, our parents' uh, choice of names. So yes, a few. So well, this is odd. Hmm. But I'm and certain that this one will clear up. Mr. Branston uh, grabs his hat and put it puts it back on his head and uh, lifts up his uh, uh, lifts up his briefcase and he says. Hmm. Well then, uh, Capt- well then, Captain Russell, my task here is done. I uh, bid you a good day. <laughs>